other. We are to forgive each other as Christ has forgiven us. So look what it says. Be at peace with each other. Sometimes it's hard to... Uh, okay, you, you got me on there, don't you? It's hard to uh, live in peace with some folks that don't want to live at peace with us, but we make every effort to try to live at peace with people. I like this one. Wash one another's feet. How many's ever had their feet washed? I mean, by somebody else. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's quite an experience. That shows our humility. Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Somebody tell me. The servant. Remember that. Now, that's hard to sell today in our culture because everybody wants to be the boss, except me. <laughs> if you've ever been the boss, you don't want to be the boss no more because that's where the buck stops. Look at the next one, number three, love one another. Next one, four, love one another. Love one another and love one another. Now, remember, love is not always a feeling. We can feel it. It's good when you can but it's nothing it comes down to our will. We just obey the Word of God. We love people. We don't do them no harm. We don't talk about them. And we do our best to help everybody. Look at number eight. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. That's powerful. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one, next one. Honor one another above yourself. That's an easy one, isn't it? Now remember, take that wisdom of God into your home with your mates, your neighbors, and, and different people. Number nine. I've already said that, but number ten. Live in harmony with one another. Wow. That's not harmony, harmony grits now, that's Harmony. Love one another. Again, Romans 8, 38. I'm not going to read that, but let's just let this run through our spirits and hearts. Stop passing judgment on one another. When that truth comes into our lives, you just stop doing it. Bob, what do you think? I don't. I just pray. <laughs> now, I know the spiritual man judges all things. But that's a different type of judgment. That's found in... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I believe it is, right in there. Stop passing judgment on one another. Just stop it. The Indians used to say, don't judge another Indian until you walk in his moxicans. How many know what I'm talking about? Let me say this. As we obey this, we will keep ourselves in the light and we will keep a lot of judgment and demonic powers off of us. You might not do this for other people's sake. You might just do it for your own sake. God says about the Israelites, I'm not really doing this for their sake. Now, he loves them, but he says, I am not doing this for their sake. I'm doing it for my sake. When you forgive people, you're not doing it for their sake so much. You're doing it for your sake. How do you understand what I'm talking about? Because if you don't forgive them, then you open the door for the enemy and he's going to rash you 24-7. And all kind of other things happen. Accept one another. Then just as Christ accepted you, just like he accepted you, just like you were then. While you were yet, or while we were yet a sinner, Christ died for us. See, it's so simple if we can get our minds renewed. It relieves us of a lot of things that we don't need to say because how many of you know we've got to give, and I pray, I pray for myself on this, we've got to give an account of every idle word that we speak. And I say, Lord, some of the stuff that I do, is it idle words? How many know what I'm talking about? Saying things that really don't, but I'm, I'm working on it and God's working on me. <laughs> Instruct one another. 
Well, who do you think you are telling me what to do? I'm, I've been around here longer than every one of you. You don't have to tell me. I've read the Bible once. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. This, 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 I, I've had to work on this. Do you like somebody to tell you something you already know? Hmm? It don't bother you. Never has in your lifetime. I'm talking about all the 80 years you've been walking with God. I mean, I mean, 30 years. You've... See, when I ask you questions, it's not just today. Your life, long life, you've got to see your long life. I have people telling me things about the scriptures, which I knew before they were born, you know. But I've learned to be gracious. Oh, wow, thank you so much. How many know what I'm talking about? Just a little. All right, some of you know what I'm talking about. Say, so we have to grow to that point that because we don't want to pop their bubble. You know what I mean? Let them share that. See, that's what we want people to do is share your faith with others. That the communication of thy faith. And what's the rest of that scripture? Maybe energized or something like that. Remember that? Philippians 1, 6. Philippians 1, 6. Remember that? All right. I love this one. Greet one another with a holy kiss. I'll be right down. <laughs> and make sure it's holy now. <laughs> when you come together to eat, wait for each other. Now, how many of you know what Paul's talking about there? You go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Remember that, that they were coming together doing communion time and, and some of the people weren't waiting on some of the other people. And so they started eating and drinking the, the, the grape juice and got drunk on it. How many remember? I, I've heard many of my brothers say, oh, it was grape juice. And I thought, hmm, what kind of grape juice is that you get drunk on? They got drunk. How many knew, how many knew that? doing the communion time and just going ahead and eating everything and some of the other people came in and they were poor didn't have much and they sat down and there was no wine for the communion and there was the food was eaten and then he says paul says something about you're taking communion unworthily not that you're not worthy but you're doing it unworthily and that was dangerous very dangerous because well, we won't go into that tonight. <laughs> Have equal concern for each other. We could stop there and uh, camp out. I hope and I believe that most of our ministers and teachers have concern for the people of God. There's not one of you that don't have a problem that it don't touch me and Susan. Are you listening? Yes. When you have a problem, I have a problem. I've got a lot of problems. On it. <laughs> See, that's a real shepherd. I'm not saying that because God birthed that into me. But we are to have concern for one another. And when you see somebody that, you know, don't just jump down their throat. You know, I mean, anybody can miss a Sunday or, or miss a, a Wednesday night or something. But if you see somebody constantly doing that, you may, might need to call them up and find out, you know, what's their problem. I mean, they need to, what is their problem, you know? Because how many of you know we're in the last days? And what does it say about the last days? Do not forget. No, what's it? Oh, make sure you forget something like that. Who can quote that for me? Do not forget the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some have. Now, we're talking about the last days here. Last days here. That's the last day syndrome, even though it was done in the early church, many of them. But it says, especially as you see what? That day. What, what, what is that day? The coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord. 
Folks, I'm telling you, I am convinced. I'm convinced we are in that moment that the Lord could come any day. Now, you haven't heard me say that in all my years of, of preaching, but I'm, I'm more cons- I am more, I'm, I don't want to get into that, but I tell you, it's watch and pray, believe me. Just get, get your life, make sure our lives are straight. And make sure you are looking for his appearance. Why? Why look for his appearance? Somebody tell me. That's good, Amy. Amy. <laughs> I was close, wasn't I? <laughs> I lost my thought. <laughs> Someone said, thank God. <laughs> We're to look out for each other. When I see you have a problem, our leaders try to do their best to help you out, sometimes in the financial uh, uh, problems that people have. Susan, we have taken our own money to help people. And that's all right. That's, you know, God has, well, that's the true shepherd. If the church don't do it, if I can, I'll do it. And And Susan, we have done that all of our lives. And many of you have too, and I know. Have equal concern for each other. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Now, you know, any time you see a scripture, at least twice, I think uh, uh, the Lord expects us to do that. So who wants to be kissed? Huh? <laughs> Why are you picking on Willie for? <laughs> when he comes in, he comes in there. Frank kisses him every. All the, I see him. Back, I see him back there smooching. I'm scared to mention that. Usually, Frank comes down and puts one on me. <laughs> hey, greet one another with a holy kiss now. All right, greet one another with a... I said, two, look at there, two places in the Scriptures. Serve one another in what? Love. You know, we are to serve the Lord with gladness. We are to serve the Lord, yes, with gladness. And another Scripture I was trying to think, but I can't remember right now. All right, serve one another in love. If you keep on biting, ooh, 21. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, you will be destroyed by each other. Now that's in the marriage, and that's in the congregation. The hardest job that leadership has is to keep the spirit sweet kind sweetness without all of the judgmental spirits floating around because see when we start doing certain things we invite these spirits in our lives see we we fight not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers now we know that in the last days many shall leave the faith and give heed to seducing spirits Oh, I've seen it. How many times have we seen the different people here? And I know what happened. I know, I know, I saw it coming. I pray, I intercede. Many of our leadership sees it happening. But they have a will. We all have a will. Especially when it, when it comes to your children. You see things, you see things like things on their tongue. What are those little balls they put on their tongue? How in the world can you eat T-bone steak with a ball on your on your tongue? Let's see. How can you talk? Is that got this is off this mountain? And you stick out your tongue and you polish it. Then they dye their hair of about three different colors. Huh? Let's get off of that. Oh, how many wants me to stay on that? 
Some of you don't. <laughs> All right, you know I love everybody. But see, those are manifestations of worldliness. Hello? All right. Now, suppose I'm up here in my shorts. There's nothing wrong with wearing shorts. But you could not look at me in the face because all you want to look at my knees. <laughs> Boy, his legs are skinny. <laughs> all right. Let us not become conceited. Everybody look at 22. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Can we have a little pause for about two minutes? How many in here has ever been jealous of a brother or a sister? All right, a bunch of honest folks. It's all right. I've been jealous. But if it manifests, all you got to do is say, thank God it was dealt with at Calvary 2,000 years ago. And I'm dead indeed under jealousy, but I am alive unto God through Christ Jesus, my Lord. See, God looks after his word to perform it, but he's looking for somebody to speak it out. Amen. I mean, you understand that we have to. Can these bones live? Well, God found somebody that would speak. You remember his name? Yeah, that's right. Ezekiel 37, chapter 37. All right. Let us not become conceited. Now, I want you to think about it. He's talking to Christians, and he says, let us not become conceited. That means we can become conceited. How many see that? And you have to watch that. Everything I have is better than yours. Mine's prettier than yours. I got a bigger car. I got my nana put for supper. <laughs> Provoking and envying each other. Now, that's in every human being, that, so don't fall out of your chair. Just recognize it and recognize that it was dealt with at Calvary by the Lord because you died, that old man of yours died with Christ 2,000 years ago. You know, and I've done it too, crying over things that, that's dead. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? The old you is dead. And we cry over it. I just never can do nothing right. I shouldn't have cursed the preacher out, but I couldn't help it. Boy, that tests him on it. That tests the preacher. Next week he'll preach on hell. <laughs> <laughs> See, all of these characteristics are in us, but as we uh, as we get into the word and and, uh, and, and we're not going through all of this because uh, this is really uh, just, you can get this home and look it up in the scriptures. And we're going to finish the front of this sheet, okay? Carry each other's burdens. Hello? When one suffers, we all suffer. That's why we want to pray for our brothers over there in the Middle East. Because what's happening over there... <coughs> How many, how many would recognize <clears throat> the spirit of Antichrist? I would. Some of you would because it says in the Bible in 1 John who the Antichrist spirit is. Did you know that? So y'all check that out. Come get back with me later on. It's amazing. 1 John brings all that out. Carry each other's burdens. That's one thing that I've tried to teach this church. <clears throat> and this is something this church does. Oh, this next one is really good. 24. 
Be irritable. Never bear with one another in love. Throw rocks at one another every chance you get. Huh? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Be patient. Patient. Be patient. I can read a whole book. I carry my Bible. I carry Bibles everywhere. I got them in my golf cart. I got them in my car. I got them everywhere. And I can read a whole book in the Bible, and Susan is shopping. And I usually do that. I do a lot of my studying while I'm on the lawnmower. Or I can just be in bed, and the Lord will give me a message just like this, and the scriptures will just boom, 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 right in my mind. Because, see, that's why you need to get the Word of God in you, and God will use His Word to speak to you. That's how I get my messages. Mm hmm. Oh, He'll bring a word up to me, and I'll investigate it because he's, he's, he's showing me something a little deeper than I saw before. I love it, which I want to get to in just a minute here. Let me get through this. Okay. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You know, a lot of you know, when I sing, you think I'm just, you know, trying to get you to realize how good I can sing, but I'm obeying the Scriptures. Did you know that? Y'all didn't know that, but you know it now. Amazing grace. I'm singing to you. Hymns. Wasn't that little girls, those kids, something tonight? Both of them, tremendous. If they keep practicing, they'll be as good as I am. <laughs> Never submit to one another. Oh. Submit to one another. Who does she think she is? I'll never submit to her. Her mouth is running all the time. No, I know nobody in here does that. <laughs> Was I wrong? <laughs> Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Oh my goodness, did we hear that? When we submit to one another, we're doing it out of reverence to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Woo, right. my goodness. In humility, consider others better than yourself. I beg your pardon. Even though you got hair on your head, that doesn't mean you as pretty as I is. Look at that last one. In humility, consider others better than yourselves. Have you noticed how people fight for their rights? Hmm? They just take the ball right out of God's hands. I was going to settle that for you, Bob, but since you, you know, you go ahead and do it and make a big mess out of it. How many's ever made a big mess out of it? I have to wait. I've learned to wait on God. Susan said, honey, what are we going to do? Whole study, baby. The minute God gives me the message or the, what to do, I'll, I'll let you know, baby. Might be a day or two days or three days. All of a sudden, I got it. Just as clear. I know what to do, what to say, how to handle it. Because God shows me. I remember we had one person acting up in the church one time. I was trying to be patient with them. Pray for them and everything. I said, Lord, what are we going to do about that? And the Lord said, uh, I've already taken care of it. He'll be gone tomorrow. Did you know when some people leave, it's a, I know you're going to understand this, but it's a great deliverance. How many understand what I'm saying? Because it always causes trouble, friction. 
striving. See, see, I have to watch out for all of those things. And sure enough, the next day that guy was gone. Deliverance by the hand of God. Oh, I can tell you many stories along that line. Now, let's get into the Word of God. I've got a lot I want to share. I want you to turn, if you will, to 1 John chapter 1. Take that home. I hope you have an a envelope at home and keep these and go through them each day. Look at them. God will make it alive to you, okay? <coughs> All right, 1 John 1. That's up on the board. What right, we got right there? All right, we are writing. Now, John is speaking. 1 John 1, 9, verse 1. We are writing about the word of life. Who is what? Jesus Christ. In him who existed from the beginning. Christ existed from the beginning of time. Well, not time, but beginnings of beginnings of whenever the beginning. What on for eternities? All right. He's, John brings that up also in his gospel that he preaches in the beginning was what? The Word. The Word was, the Word was with God. The Word was God. Who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard. Now, when you read the Bible, find out why is he talking like that. Okay? So in his day, he is clearing up some uh, misunderstanding about Jesus Christ. Remember, those people, a lot of the uh, Gentiles were just in the occults. They knew nothing about God. They knew nothing about worshiping the one true God. They had to be taught A, B, C, D, E, right on through the line. They didn't have the Bible like we have, okay? That came many years later. So, whom we have heard, not Paul, not Paul, but John said, look, we have heard him. Because some of us say, well, who is this Jesus? We, we've never seen him. And John is saying, listen, I have seen him, we have seen him, we have heard him, whom we have seen with our own eyes, whom we have gazed upon for ourselves, and have touched with our own hands. And he's establishing the fact that Jesus Christ is real, and we touched him, and we saw him, and we heard him when he was on the earth, and minister those three and a half years, and then we've seen him after the resurrection, and we touched him, and we talked to him, and we felt him so he's establishing that in their minds can we can we understand why john wrote that now go to the next verse and the life or aspect of his being was revealed made manifest demonstrated and we saw notice what john says as eyewitnesses some people say well if i could see him well i know somebody did see him paul brings it out in first corinthians 15 about the 500 people that saw him, Peter brings it out, John brings it out. So we're not believing some myth. We are dealing with people that saw him, touched him, and is bearing witness of him. So we either got to believe John, Paul, and Peter, or believe the devil. Well, I choose to believe them. How about you? You see what I'm talking about? So establish your faith <coughs> in people that have saw him. All right. And are testifying. Now it's this. And uh, John is saying, we are testifying to and declare to you the life. That is Jesus, the eternal life. That's Jesus. In him who already existed with the Father. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, the Father, and the Word was God who actually was made visible, was revealed to us, his followers. So we saw him, we touched him, we saw him, we, I mean, we spent time with him, we fellowship with him. <coughs> so when you read the Word of God, you're not believing and, 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 and listening to somebody that ain't never saw him or never touched him. So we can establish our faith solid in that. Go to the next verse now. What we have seen and and ourselves heard. Notice he's keep pounding that, doesn't he? he? Listen, I seen him. I touched him. I heard him. He's saying it again. We are also telling you so that you too may realize and enjoy fellowship as partners. 
partakers with us. So when you're around a group of people, now we weren't with John, but these people were there, and he's telling them that we want, we want you to be partakers of what we're telling you. We want you to fellowship with us because we've seen him. All right? And this fellowship that we have, which is a distinct, notice this, a distinguishing mark of Christians. <coughs> you see that word fellowship? When we fellowship here together with one another and love one another, that's why I give you that list. That's an, an extinguishing mark that you're a true Christian. If I don't have fellowship with you and you don't have fellowship with me, something's wrong. One of us is not walking in the light. Because if you walk in the light as he is in the light, listen to me, you have fellowship one with another. Is there anybody in this fellowship you cannot have fellowship with? Something's either wrong with them or you or me. You understand what I'm saying? Now, this, I'm, I'm, I'm leading this thing down the road here. It, the time is running out, but this is so important what I'm sharing tonight. Now, what is the mark of a true Christian? Somebody tell me. We have fellowship one with another. Is with the fa- mark of Christian is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ the Messiah. You know, say so you see the physical. Did anybody feel the spiritual there? I did. Hello? You, you, he's on my side. All right, go to the next verse now. I'm leading something here because here, I'm here to help you, not to hurt you, to help you to come into the light like you've never seen before and have good feelings towards one another. See, I notice people. You know, one of the reasons why we have the people go around hugging one another, I'm, I'm looking you over. Some of you go to the same person every time. And I say, why don't they go to that other person? Hmm. Somebody say, ouch. Mm-hmm. See, I'm daddy. See, daddy looks over the sheep. And we are now writing these things to you, shield of faith, so that our joy in seeing you included in this fellowship may be full and your joy may be complete. Now, you know yourself... And with all human beings, there was time that you wouldn't hug somebody's neck in this church. Some of you innocent, I know. You're just as innocent as a little lamb. Just take my word. I know what goes on. Now, right now, I think we have a right, good, healthy. There's still a little stigma in a few, but... It, it's going to break. Because you see, if you don't have fellowship with the, with the uh, body of Christ, you don't have fellowship with God. Are you listening? Now, that doesn't mean we have to agree, agree with everybody, but you love them. And that's a working of God. That's why I teach on God working in us, making us willing to love one another. Because (coughs) when God sees the unity of the body, boom! I really scared everybody's son, you didn't I? (laughs) Some of those chairs jumped when I said the airplane cracked. Oh, the Bible says you're yet in darkness. Oh, man, I wish I had an hour. I, I don't know if y'all could take it. And I, a good hour and a half or two here. All right, let's move on real quick. Like, all right, look at the next verse. And this is the message, the message of promise, which we have heard from him, Jesus, and now are reporting to you. God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. Not, no, not in any way. So there's no darkness in God. He is a God of light. Next verse. 
So if we say we are partakers together and enjoying fellowship with Him when we live and move and are walking about in darkness, not fellowshipping with one another, we are both speaking falsely. We are both speaking falsely and do not live and practice the truth which the gospel, the gospel presents. <coughs> so forgiveness is for us and not so much the other feller. You, you must see that. It's for your sake that you forgive others. Because if you don't, you're walking in darkness. See, there's no darkness in God. He loves everybody. Now, he hates some of their conduct. He hates evil. But he loves his creation. So we have to love each other, prefer others over ourselves. Next verse. <clears throat> now, but if we freely are living and walking in the light, how many is walking in the light? I can honestly say I'm walking in the light. If you're walking in the light, raise your hand. If you're not, we'll pray for you. I said, come on, get it up here. <laughs> if you're not, don't, don't put it up here. You'd be lying. Then. Hold it up there. I got the camera on you. Uh huh. Oh, that's good. I'm talking to people in the light. That's good. You can put it back down now. <laughs> Now, but if we really are living and walking in the light as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. Hello? Hello? Get it down now. Mm, that's powerful. Yeah, get it down. Write it down. If we're really walking in the light as Jesus walking in the light, we have what? Fellowship. Boom! Fellowship. Fellowship. One with another. That's why I observe, oh my goodness, I never see them hug each other. If they do, it's like, you got a moment? Let's just say I have something against him, which I wouldn't. You've seen his muscles. All right, like this. Huh? Can you read that? Yeah. Huh? How about this? He! <laughs> now, if you're really walking in the light, you'll kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but you know, overseas, that's what they do on this side, this side, and, and, and this side, you know. Oh! Somebody save me. Here comes Frank. <laughs> hey, there's fellowship, brother. Don't hurt my back now. <laughs> A little traveling music here. It's awful to have those feelings of, of, of resentment and bitterness. And, and I'm not fussing. I've been there. I've been there. And I've wrestled with God. God's wrestled with me. I say, Lord, don't let me go. I've got to forgive him. I want to send him to the moon. Well, I used to say to the moon, I want to send him to Mars. What's the furthest planet out there? I want to send him to the furthest planet out there. How many ever felt that way? Come on, speak. Sure you have. But see, we're learning now. We're learning for our sake. For our sake. If we're going to have fellowship with God, we've got to have fellowship with one another. We're going to be loyal to one another. That's why Susan will grab your hand and say, let's pray. Let's pray. It's quiet in here. All right, next verse. Move on fast now. Now notice this. If we say we have no sin, refusing to admit that we are sinners or have sinned, we delude and lead ourselves astray. And the truth which the gospel presents is not in us, does not dwell in our hearts. Ooh. 
Ooh. Now, here's what I want you to see. Back in those days, you had you have two, two uh, lines of thought. One is, you, you don't, once you become a Christian, you'd never sin no more. I don't, why would, why, <clears throat> why would uh, the Lord have John to put uh, 1 John 1, uh, 9 in there? See? So God is simply saying, uh, or through John, listen, if you sin, don't, don't, oh no, I didn't sin. No, I didn't say that. Oh, I love that person. Yeah, I can see that. You love him very much. Yeah. We've all been there. Did you hear what she said about me? Huh. I don't blame you. I throw bricks at her too. Come on, I know I said, make it funny. But that thing gets in, in our, the fiber of it. And then we all, I, I love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. Huh? Huh? And the other person's over there. You hear what she said about me? Oh, how I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Huh? I got one guy up here. Yeah, that way. All right, church, I'm trying to help you out. Because, see, for our sake, we can't do that. Because we are je jeopardizing our health. We're jeopardizing our relationship with God. We, he says, love one another. That's it. If you feel like it, love one another. No, love one another. See, God says that because he knows there is a demon out there that is a demon of unforgiveness and you just open the door and, and, and you just talk about people and gossip about people and you just put people down and, and your spirit is mean and angry and honorary and snotty. You ever seen a snotty spirit? Huh? That's snot just right out of there. <laughs> I know I'm talking uh, what we'd call street language, but that's where I was born, on the street. I learned that years ago. But you all understand what I'm saying. Of course, I could say something like, well, you know, the hippopotamus, and then there were, you know, I, uh, but you never know. But and there were, and I bet, and boy, I'm telling you, it was something else. Y'all understand that? <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from. There's no, we cannot, we've got to forgive from our heart. Because Jesus says in Matthew, if you don't, you will be turned over to what? The jailer. Demon powers. That's why God says forgive. Love one another. Don't think you're a big shot. I see what everybody's doing. You get your reward. Man, I remember when I worked out at the base, everybody was trying to... They call it, did they call it brown nosing? Is it brown? Is it... You can't say that word in church. They, they, if, if the boss would stop, everybody just bump into him, you know? How many have seen that where you work? Oh, my goodness. You know? <laughs> All right. Come on now. We've got to move on here now. All right. Now, let's move to the next verse. Nine. Now, so here's what Paul is saying. Not Paul, but this is what John said. Listen, just, just acknowledge it. Don't say you didn't sin when you have sinned. God's made provision. Just freely admit that you have sinned and confess your sins, and he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, will forgive our sins, <coughs> dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will in purpose, thought, and action. So he's, tell, he's telling people, and back in those days there was, oh, well, I, I, I don't I ever sin. John said, well, you're really lying. Because 
the Lord would not have put 1 John 1, 9 up there if he didn't know somebody was going to sin somewhere down the road. So simply humble yourself, ask God to forgive you. Now, let me say something. How many has ever been bit by a bee? A wasp? A saint? <laughs> a wife? A husband? A child? <laughs> All right. An alligator? <laughs> A snake. Where's Susan? <laughs> <clears throat> that snake was not a saint. I want you guys to know that. <sighs> Here's Susan to me. Of course, y'all never experienced this. I know y'all are perfect. You owe your wife an apology or your husband. And inside you are <coughs> churning. You know you should do it, but you got to humble yourself. And you don't want to humble yourself. How many, can you identify with that? If you can, raise your hand. I'm going to say if I'm talking. Yeah, we've all done that. And, 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 and you know, and, and Susan's in there cooking and you're coming by. <sighs> You, 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 you're nervous as a, you know, a cat on a hot tin roof. And, yeah. But you know, you've got to do it because you will never get peace. Is that not true? Oh, you may go to bed. That's why the Bible says don't go to bed without, <laughs> without what? Without eating supper first, right? <laughs> no, without forgiving people. Because in the middle of the night, This big ghostly figure will be over your bed. How many's ever seen that guy? That one? It wasn't your husband either. He said, and then you wake your wife up, honey. She goes, wait, wait, what, what? I, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, good night. <laughs> But you know, you get that peace when you say, honey, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? And let me say something here. Time's running out. For many years, we have dealt with people that have literally so much unforgiveness, they never, never admitted that they have sinned back here, and they just sweep it under the, under the rug, under the rug, <clears throat> and when they finally come to me, they say, deliver me. And it took them 40 years to become Drackler. With all that unforgiveness in their heart. And you've got to go all the way back to daddy and mama, Uncle Bill, Uncle John, Aunt Snoozy, Uncle... What's the name? And you got to get them from their heart. Oh, they said, I'm forgive. That won't work. I forgive. That ain't going to work. I said, I forgive. No, well, you, that ain't the way you do it. No remorse. No remorse. Just, I forgive. No, you don't. Jesus said, unless you forgive from your heart. See, if God's people could get set free, We've got to see that the Word of God is absolutely true. Yeah. And I'm telling you, and you know it, if you touch a hot stove, we used to have what they call these wood stoves. You ever seen a trash burner? They call it a trash burner. You put dirt down in there, and, and, you, and that, thing will, that thing will get hot. You put that, you turn that little knob down there, and that thing will go, man, I mean, it's just, you got to turn that thing down. And get red hot sometimes. I'll guarantee you, every time you touch it, it'll burn you. Folks, the Word of God is like that. Absolute truth. And God is teaching the people today, removing every spot and every wrinkle, that when He does come, we won't be ashamed. We have forgiven everybody. 
and we walk in forgiveness, and therefore we have fellowship with one another. We prefer others over ourselves. Well, there are occasions like, you know, ice cream or something like that, but uh, see, Willie will not share his ice cream with me. Have you noticed that? We've got to pray for that man. Now, you know, don't, don't be introspecting all the time, but listen to the Holy Spirit. He's been given to us to teach us, to direct us, to show us things yet to come. He lives within us. And you know what? We grieve the Holy Spirit when we don't forgive one another. You know, we think it's between you and me. No, it's the Holy Spirit's right there. And he's grieved when God's children don't forgive don't prefer others over themselves. And I think, well, as I see this group, I am proud of you. I am very proud of you. But I'm preaching, and this goes out into the world, what we're saying here tonight. Might have to cut some of it out, but, you know. But, you know, the devil can deceive. And we have to watch out for that. Because Paul was very concerned about the Corinthians. He says, I fear that Satan will get an advantage over you. We have to know his tactics. We have to know his schemes. And we have to be alert. I want to ask you, what, do you love that person next to you? If there's one piece of pie on the table, would you give that person that piece of pie? Yes. Missy, if there's one piece of chicken, one piece of chicken on the table, would you give it to me? <laughs> Willie, yes, if there was only one cup of ice cream, would you give it to me? The whole cup. Huh? The whole cup. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, you know, some of these things, we, we don't run, but they're tests. God tests us. He tests us. That's why I, I, I wake up in the morning. The first thing I do in the morning, I wake up, I say, good morning, Lord. Then I look at my precious wife. Looked like a tornado came in last night. Her hair, you know, is all out, you know. I said, good morning, honey. How you doing? How's my honey bun? She looks at me. I'm doing fine. <laughs> Smiling. She fixes my breakfast, coffee, you know, toast, a banana, little fruit. Got one second more. We have our devotion. And about three hours later, we're through with the whole thing. We've read half of the Bible. We have communion. We, we, we talk and share, communicate, pray for you guys. Gosh, it's time for lunch now. <laughs> Let's eat our lunch because we've got to take our nap at one. <laughs> then we get up and have our supper. <laughs> then I've got to check the Internet and see what we've got on there, and it's time to go to bed. <laughs> The day, I've never seen the day just goes like that. Didn't even go fishing. I hope you learned something tonight. Everybody say, Lord. Lord. 